The Cornerstone of Christian Science Perfect God and Perfect Man by Peter V. Ross God is life, and life is everywhere. Then where is man? As Paul described it, God is in you and above you, and through you all. Quote, In him we live and move and have our being. Unquote. When you read about this perfect man, who is the image and reflection of the Creator, do you see it as your own biography? If you don't see this, you miss the point. There is no place for men to remain but to abide in life. You cannot get away from life, and nothing remains for you to do but express and manifest this unconquerable life. This life knows no disease, trouble, danger, no beginning, and no ending. God is life. Your life is in you, through you, and it is ageless, diseaseless, endless. It is right where your distress seems to be. So after all, your distress cannot really be there. God is life, and man is life expressed and made individual. You cannot see God or life only as it is manifested in living creatures. You cannot see it in the abstract. God makes himself visible in the world, and man and woman furnish the opportunity for God to express his life. God, without man to reflect him, would be a non-entity. He needs man to make himself visible. He would be without expression, without man to reflect him. Man is life expressed. How close you are to God, for God is life, and you are life expressed. God is perfect life and intelligence. He is diseaseless, ageless, free, whole, endless, and so are you. This is the basis of Christian science. Thinking these thoughts is a treatment, for you cannot contemplate these facts for a moment without bringing to yourself a decree of health and harmony. This is praying, and such thinking will heal your disease, because disease is mental. The body itself is mental. Does it not tell you when it is comfortable? The mind is your upper layer, and the body is the lower. But both are parts of mentality, and you cannot touch one without touching the other. You know that your body responds to your moods and actions. When you are happy and confident, it is normal and free. When you are fearful, it shrinks and shrivels. Body and mind are parts of mentality. Transformation of mind inevitably results in changing the body. If God is mind or spirit, then man and the world are spiritual consciousness, and no danger or obstruction can ever come to thought. Thought is not localized. You may be this instant here, or a thousand miles from here at the same time. You are intelligence. How can you be weary, discouraged, old? If you feel that way, you are mesmerized and deceived. How can I help myself? Tell yourself that you are the temple of the living God, the temple of health strength, freedom, buoyancy, confidence. 
You are the place where eternal life is finding expression. I am eternal life expressed. I am the place where all-knowing mind is, diffusing intelligence, giving me ability to use it in the world and be a success. You are always talking to yourself, and most of the time you are saying what is not true. How old you are getting, what a failure you are, how discouraged you are, how sick you feel. Every time you say or think one of these thoughts, you add to the mesmerism. You would not make another man have any of these things, and surely God would not. Stop telling yourself these lies. Refuse to argue and think this way. For every time you do, you impress on your own consciousness that which will work against your welfare. God has not made this world of weariness, sickness, depression, and you are not deceived by it. Pour into yourself the truth about yourself, and this is treatment. God is in full and unobstructed operation in me. Therefore, let all distress be silent before him. Keep talking this way all the time. Give your thinking intelligent direction. Stop this stuff about failure, disease, lack, etc. Get the habit of talking to yourself and it will heal you. All is yours, and he withholds no good things. His life is your life. His bounty is your bounty. His intelligence is your intelligence. Say it, affirm it, admit it, and stop denying it and denying your own good. The effect of prayer is on the one who prays. This is where the change needs to be, not in God. This right sort of talking and thinking will change you. It will bring you into unity with God and eternal life, where disease and suffering are unknown. It will enlarge your capacity for doing things. Clarify your intellect and make you a man. As you hold to these truths, they will heal you of whatever is wrong in your life. And when the need is pressing, it will heal you immediately. Often the healing will go on gradually as you learn to talk to yourself intelligently. You are consciousness and not body. Consciousness needs an instrument to contact this crude world we seem to be in now. So consciousness evolves this body and holds it in thought. You direct your body and use it as your means of identity. At present, but it is not you. If consciousness is fearful or confused, this body is likely to be sickly. If consciousness is free, this body will be normal. As you realize that life is God, therefore lack, disease, and death are not true, that you are eternal life made visible in the world, and that you are a godlike man, these thoughts will build you a better body, a better intellect and a better business. You are the individual consciousness of God. You tell your body what to do. It serves you like an office boy doing the chores, and your intelligence serves you like a secretary. But the body is not you. You are the power of endless life. It is fear that has been freezing up your life, paralyzing your energy and ability to do. 
And this fear comes from material thinking, judging from appearance, and not according to spiritual facts. Life is divine principle, and this perfect mind is controlling the nerves and all organs of the body in harmony and freedom. The divine mind which forms the bud and blossom will care for the human body, even as it clothes the lily. But let no mortal interfere with God's government by thrusting in the laws of erring human concepts. Science and Health When are you going to begin to think constructively? You have the choice to do this now. Consciousness will build you a better world, a better job, a better career, as you think true thoughts. You will begin to see the world as it is, a place of security, beauty, opportunity, life abundant, instead of danger, disease, and misery. I am conscious of life abundant and perfect. When fear is broken, disease as inflammation or growth will disappear, for the body is released. When confidence has replaced the fear, the body will thaw out. This material world and all its danger are material and untrue. You are immune to danger, disease, and death. When you see these truths and reason them out for yourself, then you will have what Jesus said was the truth, and the truth will make you free. Free from what? Why, from danger, limitation, and ignorance. When you see that you are spiritual throughout, The material world will recede and reality appears. The actual world where danger will not find you. When I say this material world will pass away, I do not mean anything will pass but the wrong, distorted, heavy sense of the world. And the true sense will take its place in forms of beauty and perfection all around you, and we shall see the world as God sees it, absolutely good. There will be no vacuum. When we realize in harmony is unreal, this will bring objects and things into human view in their true light and reveal them as harmonious and eternal. If you seem to have disease, when you recognize that you are spiritual, mental, you will see the impossibility of that growth, either as slight or serious. If you suspend thought for one moment, you will leave your disease here and go free. Can spiritual man have a growth? You can find no place to put it. The consciousness that tells you solid objects or objects that are called solid are dangerous is deceptive and untrue. Quote, the wind bloweth where it listeth, and you cannot tell where it goes or whither it comes. End quote. To everyone that is born of the Spirit, he is invisible, spiritual substance free to come and go, unobstructed and unhindered like the wind. You never were born, and you will never die. Can you remember your birth? No, because you always have been. You are as old as God and never had a material birth. That was a dream, and you will never experience death any more than you did birth. Consciousness can never be put in a grave. It would not stand for it. 
Only your material sense of things buries the body, but consciousness escapes the grave and builds itself another body, a finer one, more suited to the new environment. The departed rise right up and a new body springs forth. They have merely turned the corner and go up a broader road, and we do not see them because we are blinded by fear and false belief. But as we do this better thinking, we will develop a vision to see the world as it is, where there is no death, disease, or separation. Consciousness preceded birth. It will live after death. We have already had many bodies, a new one every year. So why should it be impossible to have more bodies after this one becomes invisible? The sublimest and most effective prayer is this, Father, give me the glory I had with thee before this mesmerism enveloped me. Know then that you possess sovereign power to think and act rightly, and that nothing can dispossess you of this heritage and trespass on love. If you maintain this position, who or what can cause you to sin or suffer? Pulpit and Press Every time you voice the truth, you are breaking this mesmerism and stepping out into the power of endless life. Refuse to argue any more for sickness, lack, death, trouble, danger, failure, pain, discouragement, weariness, etc. But for the fact that life is God, health, strength, harmony, endurance, safety, ageless, deathless being. Pour these truths into your consciousness daily and hourly. They will heal you. Develop your capacity to be a success. Clarify your vision, and you will walk this earth a free man, dignified, unafraid, confident, and fearless. All the trouble you see and hear in the world is false thinking and its effects. It is not real or true, but you have not been educated how to think according to facts, and so have the habit of wrong thinking, which in turn brings the bad experiences. Watch your thoughts for one day, and you will see a tendency to adverse thoughts about others and yourself also. Make a job of correcting these error thoughts with true thoughts, and you will heal yourself, your affairs, and your whole life will change in proportion that your thinking changes. There is no other way to be saved, and no one else can do your thinking for you. God has a perfect plan and purpose for each one of his creatures, a right opportunity, and nothing can change this. So do not dread the future, but expect it to be good. If you will take your position as the Son of God and defend it against all suggestions to the contrary, firmly insisting on your divine right to freedom, peace, and plenty, then mind will give you a finer and more wonderful work and opportunity with the labor and turmoil out of it. What you think is the important thing.